Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. Today we'd like to take another look at the merry-go-round problem where you're sitting on the merry-go-round and you have a friend in the stationary reference frame that's trying to understand what's happening to some fixed point, point P. Today we'd like to look at the acceleration that your friend sees in the stationary frame. So first, what's happening? You're rotating at a constant velocity on your merry-go-round and you're looking at this point P. It's not moving. To you, it's completely stationary. Not only that, but the change in velocity is, an, is zero, so you see no acceleration either. However, your friend on the playground, they see something totally different. Remember, its velocity is going around like this, and if the velocity is changing, and it is, it means there's an acceleration. They see the acceleration is always towards the center. Now we know from our basic physics that if we want to know the amount of that acceleration, that's going to be omega squared r, and that's just going to be an amount, a quantity. If we wanted to be more careful, we'd say that the acceleration is equal to omega cross the velocity, whatever the velocity is out there. Or another way to say this in a more careful way is that the acceleration of point P with respect to O equals omega cross the velocity of point P with respect to O. And we were able to find that up here. If we want to create a relationship between the acceleration and the position, then we would say omega cross. Well, what is the velocity? Let's go up here, right there. The velocity is omega cross position of P with respect to O. So you can see where we get, if we're not too worried about directions and things like that, you can see where we get our omega squared r. It's really a, um, a quick and sloppy way of looking at this vector equation. And we know this to be, like we said before, the centripetal acceleration. However, this is if the angular acceleration is constant. We can also add a term that, in, that includes, let's say an orange, that includes some sort of acceleration of the merry-go-round. Maybe you're pushing on it a little fast. Now, now even though you're speeding up the merry-go-round, you're sitting on it. To you, the point P is still standing still. However, we've added an additional term to the acceleration. We've seen this term before as the tangential acceleration, and we know it to be omega, omega dot cross position. So in other words, if we combine both of these, we have some sort of merry-go-round that's accelerating and also has some velocity. We'll have some tangential acceleration, which is going in this direction if we're increasing, say, the angular speed. And we also have our centripetal acceleration right here. That said, let's take a look at what our total acceleration is. The acceleration of point P with respect to O equals omega dot crossed with the position of P with respect to O plus omega cross, and let's keep everything in position, omega cross position of P with respect to O. This is the total acceleration that your stationary observer will see on our rotating accelerating merry-go-round. We can also rewrite this equation um, in a different way to get a maybe a better feel of it. That's the acceleration of P with respect to O is equal to uh, omega dot, the change in angular acceleration crossed with the position of P with respect to O. That's not too different. But then we're going to subtract omega squared and that's in the uh, direction, also times the amount, of the position of P with respect to O. This should look just like our polar coordinate acceleration. And in fact, they are, have many overlapping characteristics. Another thing that we could just kind of infer from this is, um, say, in this graph right here, we can see that the acceleration has two terms. It has the centripetal and the tangential. And if I drew this correctly, you'd see that these are orthogonal, which means our total acceleration is probably going to be something like this from the point of reference 
of the person standing still. Finally, note that the person on the merry-go-round sees none of this. All they see is a point sitting there. In summary, this gives us a feel of how to understand a point on a rotating reference frame in absolute terms by looking at two aspects of its acceleration, mainly its tangential acceleration and its centripetal acceleration. Hopefully this gives you a more intuitive feeling of this original equation that you learned in basic physics of acceleration is equals omega squared r. Now we have a more full, more complete understanding of what it means. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you in our next video module.